Hey you guys, my name is Tisha Page and welcome to What's the Word? If you guys are new here, welcome. This is a faith-based podcast and I'm here to teach you guys how to live and love God's Word. And if you're returning here, welcome back. I'm so glad you are here. So today's episode, I'm going to talk about how to become the woman of your dreams. Yes, how to become the woman of your dreams. Now, Tanisha, what does that really mean? How do I become the woman of my dreams? Hmm. Now, let's think about this. Do you have any ideas? Do you have any goals? Do you have any dreams that God has placed in you? Sometimes we have desires. There's a lot of desires and, and, and ideas and goals that God has placed in us. And we are not moving towards that. We are losing. We are doubting it. We are doubting the plans that God has for us. I've had many moments where I doubted God. I had many moments when I doubted the plans that God had for me. And I used to compare myself and think that, you know, they have that equipment. They have the resources. God, how am I going to do this? I don't have the experience to do this. Remember when I started my YouTube channel, I was like, what? what God had asked me like told me to start speaking and I remember I was like God this ain't gonna work I don't have any experience I don't I don't know how to speak what what is this and constantly he would tell me like just just move just act and because of me being obedient and faithful I've had gained so much experience from talking like I would not be able to talk to you guys boldly like this if it was not for the months I did making videos and putting it out there though there was no though I did not have the numbers and the subscribers and all of that but I had the experience. I had the experience, I knew how to edit, I knew how to talk, I knew how to commit to an outline and start practicing. I knew what I needed to do to get it done. And I'm just so glad that I did it because now that I was faithful with little, God was able to place more things, he's placed more ideas, more plans that he has for me because of me being obedient and taking those first steps. So I wanna know, is there anybody there that God has asked you to do something. God has asked you to have, God has asked you to, to, to start that business, to start that project. And, and you're not doing it. You're not, and you're doubting it. You're just what you're questioning it. You're wondering, is this really from God? This project is just too big. This dream is just really big, God. I want to tell you that it is possible. God did not put those dreams, those goals, those ideas in you for no reason. Most times those desires that you have in you are from God. You know, obviously it's not all the time. It's not all the time, y'all. But most times the ones that I've had, those were given by God. And all I did was pray over it and God continued to reveal himself, continued to give me confirmation about this plan or vision or whatever it is. So take the time, take the time to pray about it. But if you recognize that this is from God, I want you, I want to I encourage you today to go after it. I want to encourage you to move in faith. God cannot move unless you move. God cannot do the miracle. He cannot, he cannot bless you unless you act, unless you follow his instructions, you take his directions. I'm going to read John 11, 38 through 43. And it says, Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb, and it was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there for four days. Then Jesus says, did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of people standing there. They may believe that you sent me. When he said this, Jesus said in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Like, wow, you guys, this is one of the biggest miracles that Jesus did. Well, this is one of the biggest miracles I believe that Jesus did. He had just risen up a dead man 
and now he's alive again. So now I'm going to give you guys some background. So Lazarus, if you guys don't know, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha are really good friends of Jesus. And Lazarus was really sick. And Martha and Mary sent word to Jesus, letting them know that Lazarus was really sick. And instead of Jesus going to them right away, he told, he told them that Lazarus will not die from this. He will live. No, Jesus gets there. And by the time he gets there, Lazarus already died. And when he gets there, Mary and Martha are grieving. The whole community, their friends have actually come visit and they're all grieving the death of their brother, Lazarus. And Jesus gets there and he talks to Martha. Martha tells him, Jesus, why didn't you come sooner? Because you didn't get here sooner, Lazarus has died. Jesus tells Mary, like, he's not dead, he's sleeping. Jesus ends up going to Lazarus' tomb with Martha and Mary and a group of community of people who were grieving with Mary and Martha. And Jesus walks to the tomb and then he tells, he tells them, move, move the stone from the tomb. Mary goes, it smells really bad. Lazarus has been dead for four days. Like, we, 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 we can't open that tomb right now. It, no, close it, close it. And Jesus is like, woman, Mary, I just told you I'm going to raise Lazarus from the dead. Do you, do you not believe me? Do you not hear what I said earlier? I said I was going to raise him, I was going to raise him from the dead. And the people were able to move the stone and Jesus was able to call out Lazarus and Lazarus stood up and he was alive y'all Woo! Lazarus is alive Lazarus is alive and y'all everybody you know and then it stops from there and yo yo this is a crazy miracle I think it's so fascinating that Mary and Martha believed that Jesus could heal Lazarus when he was sick but they didn't believe that Lazarus could rise from the dead and it makes me think how many people believe in Jesus to do so many other things. They think they believe in Jesus to to pay their bills. They believe God to heal other people. They believe God could do so much for other people in their lives. And then sometimes when it comes to us, when it comes to us, we have this big dream and then we doubt it because it's like, oh, I haven't seen God work in this area in my life. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if he can do that. I know he can do, he can do that for me. I know he can do X, Y, and Z for me because I've seen him do it before. But this one, this project, this dream, it's, it's huge. It's huge. This idea is big. I ain't never seen him work in, in this area before. I don't know if I have the faith for that. But God wants us to use our faith everywhere. Our faith will be tested, y'all. Every season of your life, it will be tested. There were so many times where my faith was tested. So I'll be like, God, I know you can do this. I know you can do that. I know you could pay that bill. I know you could pay my tuition. But then when he asked me to do one thing, I was like, ah, I don't know about this one. You know, then I remembered that God did, he did something for me a year ago. He did something for me two years ago, three years ago. You know, God is limitless. We can't put limits on God. We can't put caps on him. When God said he's faithful, he is faithful. When God said he's a healer, he's a healer. When God says he's a provider, he's a provider. When God said that he will give you strength, he will give you strength. He is all powerful. Your dreams and your ideas, that big project, that business, you believe it's a dead end. But God's really just waiting for you to just start. He's waiting for you to, to walk in faith in it, to start planning, to start moving. It said in the Bible, it said in verse 11, after he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. Jesus said in verse 11, Jesus said that Lazarus was asleep. Everyone thought that he was dead. You may think that your circumstances, you may think that project, you may think that dream, the idea is dead. You may think that it's impossible, but God is telling you that it's possible. He is telling you that it's possible. In the physical realm, you could only see your circumstances, but God, his vision is bigger. He sees everything. He sees the big picture. picture. He sees the, the future. And he sees you accomplishing big things. He sees you accomplishing those big things. And he put those desires and those ideas in you for a reason. Yeah, you don't got the plan. Yeah, you don't got the resources. Yeah, you don't have the equipment. Yeah, you don't got the money. 
You don't got the money, but you don't realize God is our provider. God is Jaira. He is our provider. That means he provides the money. He provides the equipment. He provides the resources. Every, you do not lack nothing. God says he has already given you the experience. He's already made a way for you. He has given you those gifts. He already put he put those desires in you. He is giving you the gifts. He is giving you the talent. He has called you. He has called you in this area. He has called you in this season. All you have to do is move so that he could help you, so that she could help you. It's not going to come out of thin air. We think that God is just going to bless us. All we have to do is wake up tomorrow and it's going to come to us. No, it don't work that way. You always have to do something. God told them to move the stone. Move the stone. And Mary doubted. She just complained and made an excuse and talked about like, oh, it smells. When he was trying to make it, he was trying to do a miracle. In the background, he's trying to do a miracle. He already said it was going to happen. And she's so worried about, she's worried about nothing, the smell. I'm trying to raise your brother alive. I'm trying to raise him from the dead. I'm trying to raise your brother from the dead. I'm trying to work a miracle. I'm trying to do something new. But you keep putting limits. You keep, you keep making excuses. Are you delaying me right now? Do you not want the dream? Do you not want the vision? Why? Why are we doubting? Why are we allowing fear to be bigger in our eyes? Why are we allowing Goliath to be bigger? When all God wants us to do is move. Do not allow the fear to be your idol. Do not allow fear to be your idol. Yeah, no, do not. Many times Jesus gives instructions, he gives us promises, and all we do is lack the faith. When in fact, when the longer we, we the longer we doubt, there'll be delay. There'll be stagnation to the point where there's a possibility that we can miss out on the God's plans. We can miss out on God's plans. We can miss out on the blessings that God has for us because our lack of moving, because our lack of faith. Many people go off on the wrong path of life because they miss out on their plans. They miss out the plans that God is from. They miss out on the blessings. They miss out on the opportunities because they never acted out. They never, they allowed fear to be their idol. They allowed fear to be bigger than God. And I want to say, do not allow doubt. Do not allow fear. Do not allow your past. Do not allow trauma to come against, to come in between your dreams, to come against your plans that God has for you. It's time to be more bold. It's time to make bold prayers. It's time to start fasting. Do something different. If you are dealing with fear, if you're dealing with anxiety, start meditating on the Bible verse. Start doing something different. Start looking for more opportunities and continue walking in faith. So last week I had just done a contest and at first I didn't think I was going to get it. I didn't think I was going to win at first, but then there's a thought in me that was like, you know what? I've come to a new shift in my life where I'm not going to doubt anything. I'm going to have faith and start moving and getting every opportunity that comes my way. If I continue moving in faith and putting myself out there, eventually I will get it eventually I will get the prize if you know what I mean and I was able to listen to what the girl told me to do she told me to go on Instagram put it up um put up a screenshot of what I learned follow her and tag her on the post on my Instagram story and mind you there's like 37 people in this zoom meeting that were um that she offered this opportunity for and she was like a fashion stylist she was going to help you figure out your wardrobe um your style and help you help you help you figure out um your clothing what things that you liked and all of that and more and the next day I won y'all I won and I was super excited and I was just like wow you know if only um I, I and I was just thinking like you know if I just have this mindset everywhere I go more doors would open for me. More opportunity will come my way. If I continue to be a woman of faith, I would be able to live the dreams and plans that God has for me. I will become the woman of my dreams if I just continue to have faith and move boldly rather than doubt. And don't get me wrong, there's a part of me that was just like, oh, you know, 
am I really going to get it? There's like mad people and mad people. She offered it to. And I'm like, ugh, I'm like the only black person here. There's just no way. And no, you guys, no, no, no. If anything, I'm learning to actually like not allow the skin, my skin color, uh, to allow me to miss opportunities. And I realize that there is racism in the world. I know, trust me. I know. But at the same time, I'm like, why not? You know, God said he chose me. God says I'm a daughter. I'm his daughter. You know, I'm a daughter of a king. I don't lack anything. If I'm a daughter of a king, that means I get everything, right? I means I live an abundant life. So I have to start acting like it. I cannot doubt because what I'm black, you know, that's not going to come to me. No, if I have that perspective, nothing will come to me. So I started to be like, you know, I'm a daughter, Ken. I am chosen. I'm amazing. And you know what? I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to be bold and I'm going to walk in faith. This is something that I desire. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to move. I'm going to act. I'm going to just follow her instructions and put myself out there, follow her and do whatever she says. And we'll see what happens. And y'all, yes, I won. And once I was able to meet her, she told me that she was Christian, y'all. Yo, 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 you see? And I would have never known if I did not put myself out there which is great. And I'm working with her there. I'm working with her and she's amazing. She's so sweet. And I just wanted to say that don't put limits on yourself. Do not allow their skin color. If you're black, if you're Latino, if you're, you know, if you're Asian, white, whatever, do not put limits on yourself because of how you look, um, your appearance, um, your experience, your degree, whatever that is, stop putting limits on yourself. You are more. You are so much more. The fact that you are living in this earth, you deserve everything that God has for you. Like I said, when it comes to our dreams, our visions, our ideas, and God, you feel like God is telling you what to do. He's telling you, he's, he's telling you what to do. He's giving you the eyes. He's giving you those ideas. He's giving you the desires. Start moving because you have everything that you need. You have, you're equipped. You are equipped. You have talents. You are gifted. And the most important thing is you have the power of God over your life. You have the confidence of God. There are so many people who do not know God, but then there's Christians who know God and they still doubt him. Like what? You know who your God is. You read your Bible. You read your word. You know how powerful he is. Use it. And then there's people who don't know God and they're confident in themselves, but they still, you know, they still move. Why, why aren't we Christians moving? Why are we moving in our faith? Why aren't we taking advantage? Why aren't we listening to the call that we have on our life? Yes, the dream is big. Yes, you, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of time, but do not make Goliath bigger. Do not make Goliath bigger in your eyes. You need to start making God powerful in your eyes. You need to start declaring him in your life. Instead of being like, I don't have this. I don't have that. I feel like the enemy's doing X, Y, and Z. Oh, oh my gosh. Distractions. Don't no, No, don't start complaining about the enemy. Let's start lifting up God. Let's start declaring his power. Let's start declaring the character of him. Let's read and say like, God strengthens me. God protects me. God secures me. God is faithful. God is my provider. God is amazing. God is Omega. God is, God is Alpha and God is, God is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. Let's start saying things like that. Let's start declaring our father rather than declaring the fear, declaring the enemy, declaring the thoughts of the enemy, declaring all the negative things that, um, that is pushed in our mind. Let's start declaring the positive things, the things of God, the godly things. The person I want to focus on is David. David was a man, was a man that recognized his authority. He recognized the power of God that he had. Though he did not have the resources when he faced Goliath in battle, he still managed to win. He still managed to to, to beat Goliath because of the confidence he had in God. He had a rock. No, no, sorry. He had five rocks and he had a slingshot. Meanwhile, Goliath had an armor. He had a shield. He had a, a, a javelin. He had a spear. 
He had a helmet. This dude was armored. He was armored and he was huge and he had so much experience. Everybody was afraid of this guy. Everybody in their moms. The Israelites did not, the Israelites feared him and did not want to battle him because they feared death. They feared that they were going to lose. They feared that they're going to lose their life. But David was like, you know what? I don't need all that. I don't need the, the armor. I don't need the equipment. I don't need the javelin. I don't need the spear because I know who God is. I recognize who he is and how much power he is, how powerful he is. He will make a way and I will kill you. Yo, David said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to cut your head off. He did, yo. This dude was so bold. He came up to, to Goliath with all his armor and spear and with his, and David had his slingshot and he had his five rocks and he was like, I'm going to kill you. All right. Because I just know who God is. I'm going to kill you. I'm not going to die today. I don't have much, but I know who God is and he's all powerful. Let's do this. Next, I'm going to read first Samuel 17, 45. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day, I will give you the carcasses, correct me if I'm wrong, if I said that wrong, of the Philistine army to the birds and to the wild animals. And the whole world will know that there's a God in Israel. Woo! That was amazing. And David just comes up to him and confidence was like, I'm going to kill you. You're going to die. Everybody's going to see and everybody's going to know that God is working in me. God is waiting for you to start moving in faith. He's waiting for you to start pursuing your dreams and your business and tell the world that this is God. To tell the wor world that it was only God that could achieve this through you. To tell the world that Jesus is alive and he is real. He wants Christians to start using their faith to give him the glory so people could recognize that there's a God. There are a lot of people who do not believe in God, who lack the faith, who don't serve him, who believe that he's not real, that they don't believe that he's a true God. And Jesus is looking at his children like, yo, listen, I have plans for you. Some of these plans are, are to glorify my name. That project you're doing, you're, I want you to serve others, but I want you to, I want people to recognize there's God working in you. That you, you couldn't have done this on your own. You know that, but you have a faithful God. You have a faithful father. Start going, start planning so I could bless you, so I can give you favor. God wants to do so much in our lives. And he's just waiting for us to move. He's waiting for us to, 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 to give him the glory when everything comes, when everything happens. The dreams, the ideas, the goals, God, it's, it's not only for us, it's for God to glorify his name. Yes, woman of God, we have a life that we want to live and a plans that God has for us. But we also recognize that it's also for the glory of God. Now, it's not only for me, but for God. And going back to the point where I said that we are equipped. So David, David had a slingshot. David had five stones and he did actually have experience, but nobody was, nobody was there. This was all done in private. I'm oh, sorry, I burped. This was all done in private. It says here, that he had killed a bear and a lion. And because of that, he had faith that God was going to help him kill Goliath. And if you don't know the story, he did kill Goliath. He cut his head off. He cut his head off. And everybody went wild. Woo! Yo, David just killed Goliath. This dude had no experience. This dude only got a slingshot. This dude only got five rocks and he took him down with one rock. What? That is impossible. There is only... God, there's only, there only has to be God that helped him. We have these gifts. We have skills that God has already given us. It just takes faith to move. It All we really need is faith to move and God will do the rest. It's not really on us, 
but it's God that's going to help you. God will help you. God will strengthen you. God will give you the ideas. God will give you the plan. God will give you the strategy. You just have to move. You just have to do your part. You are fully equipped to do the things that God has called you to do. Stop doubting and stop falling to the traps of the enemy. You are more. You are powerful. I know I've been talking to you guys about being, being faithful, move, all of this. I, you know, I have not always been faithful. I've been, I've allowed fear many times to win time and time after again. But what I've learned is never to give up. You know, if you're struggling with fear, if you're struggling with anxiety, you know, start dealing with it. You know, there are steps that you have to take. And I've been learning that if you're going to do the things that God has called you to do, and he's asking you to build something, start something up, start praying over yourself. You know, you could also pray over yourself, over anxiety, over fear while planning. This week, these past few days, I've been feeling fear. And time and time after again, I've been telling myself like, you know, Fear is just a feeling. I don't have to follow it. I don't have to to stay stagnant. I don't have to let it win. I still can move and rebuke it in the name of Jesus. So if you're struggling, I would I would advise you to continue praying, fasting, but also building, planning, strategizing. You know, build and fight. Build and fight. Build and fight. Just like in Nehemiah, Nehemiah, when he had to build the, when he had to build, shoot, what he had to, when he, had, just like in Nehemiah, when he had to build the wall, he was building and he was fighting. We have to build and we have to fight. We have to build and we have to fight. So continue praying, continue fasting, continue rebuking fear, continue rebuking anxiety, and work on that project. Work on that business, work on that plan, work on your dreams, become the woman of your dreams, becoming the woman that God has desired for you. Change your life, get your life up, get your faith up, get your life up, get your faith up. I was like practicing that like last week I was practicing that. I'm like, get your life up, get your faith up. Christians, get your life up, get your faith up. You feel me? In order to live a fulfilling life, We got to get our faith up and start moving so God could do what he can do. Remember, you have the authority of God. You have the Holy Spirit. You are gifted. You are a woman of God. Remember all these things and more. And I want you to continue moving for the prize. Continue running for the prize. Continue building and fighting. Time is so important. I'll be honest. Time is so important. I've been learning that. So don't allow time to continue passing by and allowing your dreams, your ideas, that vision you have to to go, to die. The plans that God has for you is just laying dormant. If you could just move, God could raise it up again. God could transform your life in a month, a week. If you could just move, he can give you, he could help you, he could prepare you if you just move. I'm done with this episode. I just pray you guys have a great and blessed week.